Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my channel. We are in Rahu and Ketu study part 21. This one is a little tricky for me to go through because there is an energy to this and I will get to this why. In this new energy, we got to learn one thing which is integrity like I spoke of earlier and more so transparency. Okay, this will play out in in every institution, state, nation, personally, individually, families, everywhere it will play out. What do I mean by transparency in this context? It's more about keeping it true to its truth and true to its knowledge, true to its application, true to being true to the earth, to all the creatures of the earth, because we are living on a living being, earth is a living being, and doing things for the greater good of the collective, because it's a mother energy, it is shifting towards the south of the planet. Why am I saying all of this? Because we come to Rahu now has stuck his head in Pushya Nakshatra, in Cancer. Now Pushya Nakshatra is a beautiful Nakshatra, right? It's a Devgana and it's all about patience, wisdom, kindness, optimistic by nature, growth, positivity, spouse neglect for duties. That's one of the themes of it. If you want to go through the mythology, there are plenty of good channels for it. Analysis of relationship, dependable, Blind to dangers, they can be a little blind to their own dangers, okay? Jealousy in Pada 4, they help selflessly, all good things, right? Generosity for the community, very futuristic, great host, forgiving, love to share with people, nourishing speech, voice, universal compassion, all the good things of life. <clears throat> So it's ruled by Brihaspati himself. Brihaspati is the guru of the devas. So the deity is the main thing of nakshatras. If you don't know what I mean, look at the 27 nakshatra playlist. Now, I go and stick my Rahu head in this. What happens? Rahu is the guy. One of the things, characteristics of Rahu it is, is it is shrewd. It is manipulative. It is cunning. It wants to get its way at all costs without weighing what the costs are to their own personal life, to everybody around them, to the governments, to the planets, to everything. They don't care. That's the Rahu is a don't care attitude. I'm going to get this at all costs is Rahu. Now if I put my head in Rahu in this thing, such a beautiful nakshatra, it creates fake gurus. It creates teachers who want to be teacher-like. Rahu wants to be like the dispositor, in this case, Moon. So you have got to see where Moon is placed, Cancer. It falls in Cancer. So it wants to show off as if it's patient. It wants to show off as if it has wisdom. It wants to show off as if it is kind. It wants to show off that it is optimistic by nature. Just check all the fake guru characteristics out there and in social media now that it's everywhere, even on YouTube and everywhere, you can see this. People are coming out with opening up the fake gurus everywhere, right? All the youngsters are doing these videos on other channels as well. I'm very amused by it because this is not a time for fakery. This is a time where the genuine human spirit must come and shine. It's not time for making fake stuff. You will be called out. So Rahu wants to pretend all of these nice things of Pushya. It doesn't have anything. Because let's face it, what does Rahu look for? It looks for Ketu. It looks for the body. The head looks for the body to be complete. So let's go Pada by Pada and see where, how this manifests. Okay? Let's keep analyzing. So number one. The classical characteristics of Rahu and Ketu as described by the classical Vedic literature. Okay, what is Rahu and Ketu? These are the north and the south nodes of the moon found by the virtual points which are the intersection points between orbit of the moon around the earth and orbit of the earth around the sun. So basically if you take two eclipses, ellipses, it will form two intersection points. Yeah. So these Two intersection points are called the North Node and the South Node. They are virtual nodes, although they behave like planets and we shall see why in a minute. So who is Rahu? The symbols are there like a horseshoe and the reverse horseshoe, right? 
This is typically how it is portrayed in Western astrology. So I'm using the same symbol here. Rahu is mythologically depicted as the severe head of a demon, symbolizing constant, endless, insatiable hunger and appetite, be it sensual or physical, yet it is unable to hold on to or grasp it. Rahu is the one who constantly wants something. Think of it as a live head only, not the body. Okay, so it can't hold on to anything or be satisfied even if it gets that thing since it has no arms or body or stomach right? just a head which is alive this gives Rahu the title of Bhoga Karaka or meaning one who is after sensory materialistic pursuits so think any earth sign for example they want sensory materialistic pursuits or think any of the signs literally whatever they are after Rahu wants that and wants that very badly and goes after it with everything this is an energy in us by the way it is not a planet it's a virtual node but it will behave like a planet which we shall see why so it is unable to satisfy that hunger or hold on to anything even though it gets something it wants to move on to the next and then to the next and then to the next this is why Varahu is also called as the guy who wants foreign things not of the native land or not of what the person is natively born in. Why? Because of that insatiable hunger. There is always insatiable hunger to go after one thing after the another without being able to hold on to it. That's Rahu. Ketu, on the other hand, is mythologically depicted as the severe body, the remaining half of the demon, symbolizing constant and less insatiable search for identity. It is looking for the head but it doesn't have a head so it is looking for that identity everybody's identity ego is centered in the head what you look like right it is also seeking for true purpose sense of self as a result of this it tries to hold and grab on to everything that it can find its hands on because it has got hands ketu has got hands it's trying to hold on to everything but it releases immediately because it knows that's not the head it's like trying to grasp on to everything thinking oh i want this or i am this i am that i am this not getting any identity because it's not finding the head there since it has arms and walks everywhere it goes around through life walking from place to place people situation circumstances but not knowing who or what it is it doesn't have a head this is why ketu is referred to as mokshakaraka or the seeker's path the one energy in us which seeks something that's why ketu is called the mokshakaraka now this is the classical interpretation okay now we shall see how this plays out in the modern interpretation. Very important to connect the bridges. Now here you have the Rahu Ketu general characteristics as modern interpretation. This I have borrowed from the book Light on Life by Robert Sobala. Excellent book. I have put it in the community tab if you want to go through it or purchase it and read it. I seriously suggest that. Okay. The North Node of the Moon, Rahu. What does it become because of the characteristics which classically is told in the texts? What does Rahu lead to in the modern context? Rahu is responsible for originality, individuality, independence, insight, ingenuity, inspiration and imagination on the positive side. Because Rahu and Ketu both love to explore foreign stuff, things out of the box, things not taught by tradition, Rahu and Ketu will be anything but traditional. Okay? Think of it as something foreign to the culture, to the way you are taught things. Looking for original stuff. If there is one singular force that is responsible for creating everything that we keep modernizing, so to speak, thinking out of the box, it is this. That's why it's important to pay attention to this. Okay, back to this. So Rahu on the downside becomes leads to confusion, escapism, neurosis, psychosis, deception, addiction, vagueness, illusion, and del delusion. This is the downside. Now how this plays out and why we will have to see individually in the charts. We shall, we shall see that. Okay, Ketu. Ketu, the guy with only the body, no head there, is gives us the feeling of universality, impressionability, idealism, intuition, compassion, spirituality, self-sacrifice, subtleness, on the positive side on the downside it can lead to eccentricity fanaticism explosiveness violence unconventionality amorality iconoclasm impulsiveness and emotional tensions this is on the downside 
this is what it plays out and Rahu Ketu is typically an axis like it is shown over there right Rahu Ketu let me remove myself for the time being from that axis okay there you are so you see it as an axis okay 180 degrees apart and it can play out in any one of the opposite houses it can play out in 1 7 2 8 3 9 4 10 etc etc we will see that later but this axis becomes a definition point of where in your life, in your different houses, are you looking for these two aspects? And they are always opposite to each other, as you can see. Okay, to stand opposite to each other. So if it plays out in second house, it detaches itself from the eighth house. If Rahu is in second house, it Ketu will be in the eighth house. You see what I mean? And so you will bring the eighth house aspect with these aspects shown here. Second house with that aspect shown over there. Of course, it plays out with something called as dispositors. We shall see that next. Now, if you go to a traditional Vedic astrology, they will go on and on endlessly about dispositors. What the hell is a dispositor? It's an invented term by the Vedic astrologers. It has no meaning of its own. It shows the disposition. And what's the story on this? Rahu and Ketu both are enemies of the sun and the moon. This is the basic principle. So it has the solar aspect and the lunar aspect. The solar aspect is called the dispositor and the lunar aspect is the nakshatra which gives the entire characteristics and the ball game of Rahu and Ketu. Okay? The solar or the dispositor means since Rahu and Ketu are enemies with the sun and do not have a full identity of their own. Remember it's a virtual node. It is not a planet. They both do not have any planetary characteristic individually so they take on the identity or the disposition of the lord of the zodiac sign that they sit in and borrow the attributes of the house from which that lord sits in suppose mercury is in the third house okay and rahu sits in the house of mercury somewhere else so it will borrow the attributes of mercury sitting in that third house and bring it to that particular house wherever rahu is sitting in got it Nakshatras. Since Rahu and Ketu are enemies with the moon and do not have a full identity of their own, individually they take on the shade of personality. Nakshatra is essentially a shade of personality. It's coloring of a personality. It's seeing the world through different colored glasses. That they sit in and borrow the nakshatra traits and attributes which color their propensities. So Rahu and Ketu do two things at the same time. At the solar level, it goes with the dispositor, that is all of the planets, physical planets, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Sun, Moon, so on. So they take on the attributes of whichever house they are sitting. If it sits in Rahu sits in Cancer, it will you have to look for where Moon is sitting, which house, and what it is doing there, and even the Moon Nakshatra. If it is sitting in Leo, Rahu in Leo, that means it you have to look for where Sun is sitting and which nakshatra and which house. So it will bring those attributes. That's the way you have to analyze this. Okay. Let's see some aspects of which house they play in and why. Now there are some vital aspects that you keep, need to keep in mind when evaluating Rahu and Ketu because this is important for, especially for people who are sort of looking for self-development to understand where they are coming from. If you're not interested in changing yourself, this entire channel is useless for you. But if the other one who is interested in knowing what is happening in my life, where do I need to go, what are my talents, and you question these kinds of things, excuse the noise somebody is drilling about, so then you need to understand these aspects. Now that's the typical chart, Indian chart, and house numbers are depicted as 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 12. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha is there, and I have stuck Rahu Ketu as possible axis on the 1, 7, that is Aries and Libra, that is the top and the bottom. So either it can go to house number 1 or 7. Rahu Ketu can be reversed, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Or in 4 and 10. Now 1, 4, 7 and 10 in Vedic Astrology are given very vital importance because they are the foundational aspects that define who you are, that define how you operate in life, throughout life. So these become crucial. Why? The 1, 7 axis effects if Rahu and Ketu fall on there has a direct effect on your self and other concept. 1 and 7 is self and other. How you re relate to yourself and how you relate, look at the world around you as others. 
including the spouse because seventh house is the house of the spouse but also others so how you develop through life and how you develop a relationship with others so it defines who you are in a very broad sense one seven axis of rahu ketu the four ten on the other hand fourth house being the house of the mother tenth being father fourth being home tenth being career you see this has a you know all kinds of implications which define who you are the four ten axis has effects on the heart versus mind mind wants to, is the one who goes out there in the world and being used in the career right you dissipate your energy as the mind in the external world heart is your home your home center where you feel comfortable home is where the heart is that kind of a thing so heart and home is affected by this rahu ketu axis again rahu and ketu might be reversed rahu might be in the fourth ketu might be in the 10th or vice versa same way with 1 and 7 but these are the vital relating aspects of rahu and ketu now what about the rest of the houses now rest of the houses are called trikona or kona in sanskrit right these are the things that come and go in your life they let be second house third house fifth house sixth eighth ninth eleventh and twelfth these are the things that come and go in our life through life through your entire life these are things that are added into subtracted from us but this is not us one four seven and ten is us everything else is secondary which revolves around you as life comes and goes all other axes depict what attachments and detachments we have towards different areas of our life that's all it is they are less significant in terms of rahu and ketu when compared to 1 7 4 and 10 axis of rahu and ketu please remember this when you evaluating you just have more propensity towards one part of life and less towards others rahu is attachment ketu is detachment rahu is expansion ketu is reduction and they stand opposite to each other all this right now let's take the cases one by one so let's see the fourth pada we can see there rahu is placed in the fourth pada of pushya nakshatra and ketu on the other side is appearing in shravana nakshatra which i have shown even in this table over here so we are talking about this yellow line okay so now we have in the natal chart cancer capricorn both are movable signs always keep this in mind movable and fixed signs and dual signs movable and dual signs rahu ketu do very well in the fixed signs they are like Ah, I am too tight. This is, clothing is too tight for me. I need to move, break away from this. Or they get over obsessive about a singular thing. Let's see what happens here. So in the natal chart, you got to look at the dispositor moon where it's placed for this entire uh, pusha series. Okay. So you got to keep this in mind because this can create fake guruism. So Cancer to Scorpio. So in the natal, it's going into. Cancer to Scorpio for Rahu and Capricorn to Taurus. So we are talking about Scorpio Taurus. Now Scorpio and Taurus are fixed signs. Now from movable, Rahu goes from movable sign to fixed sign in Navamsha, and Ketu goes from Capricorn to Taurus, movable to fixed sign in Navamsha as well. So we have an individual who is very flexible, very moving, very dynamic in the first part of life. You might say till thirty-six years, and in the later years they will go into becoming very, very obsessive, compulsive. When Rahu falls in Scorpio, it can become very intensely dealing with their low self-worth issues. They want to look like Pushya, who is the guru, who knows the real wisdom. There's a difference between real wisdom and. pretentious wisdom you might want to pretend something rahu is a great pretender ketu is a great pretender everything is a pretension okay however ketu acts differently from rahu in the sense it detaches itself because it doesn't have an identity no head so capricorn here going from capricorn to taurus is going from earth to air sign sorry earth to earth sign so ketu does not do very well in earth signs because ketu is a moksha karaka right there it feels the frustration i have all these materials i have all these things of my life depending on where saturn and venus are placed capricorn and taurus so it thinks okay i have all these good things of life but i don't want any of it i have a good family i don't want anything to do with family i have good amount of wealth i don't want any of that stuff 
what I want is this Rahu over here. What I want is to feel a lot of emotion. What I want is to feel the depth of intensity. So this kind of access will chase probably relationships in the name of trying to be pretentious guru. This is a teacher who has affairs with students. Could be. You have to see the dispositors and this enemy and this and that's why I've always left this chart in every single one of the Rahu Ketu videos. Just check the dispositors where it's placed in birth and in Navamsha. I'm just giving the general points here. So this could be something like that. Let us see what happens in Pada 3. Hopefully that's slightly better. So the third Pada. From fourth we have come to third Pada. Right? Again, let's see this arrow over here. This guy. So now we are in Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, Aries in Rahu Ketu axis over there. This means... Uh, is going from water to air sign and it is going from earth to air sign so earth to fire sign earth to fire sign and water to air sign these are not really mixing kind of elements so they might find a change in personality where these people might be feeling a little weird after 36 like what changed I'm feeling a little different now it's like more like I have more ideas I'm not wanting more emotion, Cancer to Libra. I'm not wanting more emotional content out of it. I'm wanting more of to feel sort of passionate in my head, Libra. And Ketu on the side, other side, they want to. They are kind of feeling detached from Capricorn going to Aries. So Capricorn wants to achieve work in the real world. And what does Aries want to do? It's just an initiator. It wants to initiate stuff. And they are feeling detached from initiating anything. So detachment from initiating anything. Just sit there and not do anything. Lazy. So lazy ass. So Aries. If K2 sits in Aries. It becomes detached from that kind of action oriented. These are more of withdrawn kind of people. Lazy people. But Rahu goes into Libra. It does well. Because now it's a moving sign. Right? Ketu and Rahu will do very well in moving or fire signs. So it does very well in this. But it want, it is highly desirous of teaching Pushya Nakshatra. On the other side, also keep watching for Ketu in Shravana Nakshatra. Shravana Nakshatra has the theme of not listening to the teacher. And guess what? Pushya is the teacher. Opposite is the guy who does not listen to the teacher. And Pushya wants to teach. Understand the dynamics of this and how it plays before we go into the chart and the dispositor and we before you start examining it and making up your mind. We don't be quick to come to judgment. Okay. Let's see Pada 2. So what happens in Pada 2? We come to the Virgo Pisces axis in the Navamsha of Rahu and Ketu, but we have also changed the Capricorn Nakshatra to Uttarashada. Now Uttarashada becomes more aggressive because it wants to maintain victory. Uttarashada Purvashada Pev is about going after victory and maintaining victory. Uttarashada wants to maintain victory at all costs. It's a very victorious sign. And Saturn encourages it. Capricorn encourages it. Placement of Saturn, you got to see where Ketu is. But now you have put Ketu here. So the urge to go out there and create and maintain victory is lost. Ketu gives a detachment from that, from Uttarashada. Right? So they are not interested in gaining victory. Again, it becomes a lazy way of doing things. And it goes, Rahu goes, as you can see, it goes into Cancer to Virgo. It's going from water to earth sign. Moveable to dual sign. Again, this also creates a little bit of hassle which is what it's doing even in the Ketu. Should I? Should I not? Should I do this? Should I not do that? Should I choose this option? Should I not choose this option? This is moveable to dual. Dual is always caught up between duality. To the difficult thing about choices, too many choices. I don't know which one to choose. That is dual sign. Virgo is a dual sign. However, Rahu does well there because it's an earth sign. These kind of people may become coaches. These kind of become people may want to become coaches, want to become counselors, want to become business coaches, etc. They may or may not do well. Now you got to see where Jupiter is actually placed, which is not part of this whole equation. 
but it helps if jupiter is well placed then these people may even have that benefic aspect of jupiter which tends to temper the rahu ketu obsession about things because rahu ketu does not have a personality by itself it is an imitator it is going to copy paste somebody else's thing okay no originality whatsoever let's see what happens in the first pada of pushya now the first pada of pushya we are talking about this axis over here right and this axis so the first pada it goes from cancer to leo from natal no i'm sure rahu goes from cancer to leo you got to see where the sun and moon are placed sun in navamsha moon in birth chart and everything depends upon the the strength and position and the house of dispositor the dispositor chart over there always have a look at this and in uttara shada it goes from capricorn to aquarius a twer sign so we were talking of saturn to saturn so this is okay ketu is there it's providing a sort of detachment from your personality which can influence masses and which wants to do work detachment from work detachment from masses okay what does rahu do on the other hand this is the energy it needs to provide this rahu cancer wants to go to leo now this guy is a dominant character because rahu is going into leo in avamsha so it wants to have all the egotistical power that rahu decides rahu wherever it whenever it goes into the leo in avamsha or in the natal chart it is highly dominating in nature i want to dominate at all costs this can also lead to narcissism once again narcissism is more common than you think is the attitude that i know better than you i will give you advice and you are going to shut up and listen to me pushya rahu in pushya okay the need to dominate in terms of teaching in terms of giving advice in terms of giving wisdom all in a pretentious mode especially if jupiter is not strong is not influencing the good houses 1 5 9 that kind of a thing all of these things are there okay so it's a little push and pull in this particular nakshatra because it's a very good nakshatra to have especially if jupiter is in pushya or if mercury venus is in pushya it does very well but those are planets with actual personalities rahu ketu does not have a personality it's just pretending to do that so we are almost like unraveling the human shadow okay rahu ketu is the study of unraveling the human shadow so next one we shall deal with mr punarvasu rama's nakshatra let's see what happens if you stick rahu in that meanwhile take care be safe be happy